Hey everyone, it's Lori from Scraps by Sissy. Happy Thursday! I am going to apologize uh, ahead of time here if you hear any noises in the background. The neighbors next door are taking down some of their, there's three tall cedar trees in their front yard and I thought they were done but apparently they're not. As soon as I hit the go button, the saws started up again. So if you hear anything, I apologize. So other than that, how's your week going, everybody? Let's see, I wanna get this up on my, there we go, I can see what's going on. So anyway, um, yeah, it's, uh, we had started our Camp Nana and Papa this week. So um, for those who haven't seen my personal Facebook page, my grandson Charlie is going to be spending every Wednesday with us. So with that thought in mind, my summer schedule for my Facebook Lives will be the same except for the third Thursday of the month. Um, I have my stamp club the third Friday of the month and I'm going to need to use that entire day for final prep work. So I will only have uh, Facebook Lives on the first, second, and fourth uh, Thursdays of the month. So I wanted to show you this cute little treat box. This is something that I uh, included as the pillow gift in my paper share this year and it was just too cute not to share with you. I will say it was not my idea. I cased it from fellow demonstrator Connie Stewart but I just fell in love with this. It's just so sweet. Just like me. Haha. Ha. So open up the side of the box and it is added a little bit of adhesive there to make it easier to tie the bow. Here we go. It's a little tea bag and these little Biscoff cookies. Now if you've never had these, these are the perfect little cookie to go with a cup of tea or a glass of iced tea or coffee. They're just really, really good. And I'll show you, I got these in my local grocery store and they came in a little snack pack with 14 of them. We're actually gonna use two of them they fit perfectly in there. And then the tea I'm using is, is what I think they pronounce it Twinnings, Twinings? I don't know what it is, but it's Earl Grey, one of my favorites. And this fits in there perfectly too, which I'm assuming she created it around both of these. My mind does not work in 3D, so thank goodness for Pinterest and fellow demonstrators who have the mind that worked that way. If you had to wait for mine to do it, you'd be waiting a really long time. So let me give you the measurements on our little treat box. The fun part is you can get four of these out of one sheet of eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. So if you're making multiples, that works great. So my base is in Fresh Freesia. Hi Beth, how are you? I see you joined us. So this is cut at two and three quarters by eight and a half. It's scored at three quarters, three and seven eighths, four and five eighths, and seven and three quarter inches. And then this little piece of designer series paper is from the Pansy Petals designer series pack. And it's cut at two and five eighths by three inches. So I'll show you, I know when people, um, give you directions on scoring and this and that. Sometimes I get a little confused. I thought I'd show you how this works. This is our Simply Scoreboard. Love this thing, especially because it comes with these little, um, I'm gonna call it a tick, but that's not what it is. These little things that fit right inside these little place markers and it makes it easier to score when you've got multiples. So for this project, you're going to score on the eight and a half side and see I've already got it marked at three quarters, three and what is that, five eighths, uh, nope, three and seven eighths, four and five eighths, and seven and three quarters. This is the original piece that I started with. I'm not going to score that. I just wanted you to see this and how it worked. But like I said, you get four out of a piece of cardstock without any waste. So that's always a good thing. So, and the stamp set we're using is the Measure of Love, such a cute stamp set. 
And what I didn't realize while well, I was until after I designed this, these little stamps right here match that piece of designer series paper in the pattern party pack. So if you're in my stamp club, guess what you'll probably be making next week? Just just a hint. So let's get those two little stamps out that we're going to be using. Well, I've got the stamp set out, and we're going to be using Sweet Friend, and then we're also going to be using this cute little, see I already had them on top of the paper. This is the way our photopolymer stamp sets come now. It'll come on the, you know, like they used to with that hard piece of acetate, and then there's a pattern on the uh, this little printed piece of paper here that is the cover and you'll just set your stamp right on there. I put this on here just to keep them safe especially if there's an company die set so that when you store them together it doesn't mess up the stamp at all. Now since we've already got this scored and ready to go I'm going to use my corner rounder from the what it says detailed trio punch and I'm going to round all four corners, kind of give it a more finished look. I mean, you just definitely don't have to, but I like the way it looks. And that's the way Connie did it, too. Okay, so that's done. See, this punch gives you not only the corner rounding, it gives you a little hole for a tag, and then this decorative little flower for on the corner of a page. It'd be cute for scrapbooking. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold all my score lines. And I'm going to glue my piece of designer series paper and get out my adhesive. And it's going to fit right on top. Now you could definitely use either side. I liked the gingham myself, so that's why we went with that. Very summery look to it. I'm just going to add that right there. Okay, so now for the inside, I'm just going to use my stamp and seal. You could use the plus if you wanted, and we're just going to add that tea bag right on the inside. Chloe, here's the people next door with the tree, the tree trimmers. It's pretty impressive watching them bring down a, I think that tree's probably 20 or 30 feet tall. Shh, Chloe. Um, one of the things that she did for the cookies is she added a piece of tape to the back. Of course, I forgot to bring my tape over, so we're just going to add them with adhesive and stick them in here just like this. And everybody's secure. Right, let's move them down. I got them right on the fold. This one too, of course. Move them down a little bit. Okay. So we're going to close them up. I'm going to add just a little touch of adhesive right here. It makes it easier when you're tying your bow. And we're using some of that really pretty fresh freesia ribbon. And da, 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 where's my bow? Oh, here it is. Takes about 21 inches for of the ribbon to give you enough length in tying your bow. Of course, I didn't measure it. You know me in measuring. That doesn't seem to want to stick, does it? Probably because I didn't tuck these guys under. Let's try that again. And of course, because we're live. Things always work differently when you're by yourself in your crafting space. Well, geez, people. Okay, there we go. Now we'll tie our ribbon. And you're just going to wrap it around. Make sure we're kind of even on both sides. And then I'm going to. For some reason, the last couple times I've been tying bows, I've had to hold my projects upside down to get my bows. To face right. Make sure I'm in the shot here. Okay. Just bring it over like this. Pinch your end. Tuck this little bunny ear in. And there we go. 
Isn't this ribbon just beautiful? And it ties really well, too. All right, here we go. Since that's kind of long, we'll trim his little leg, his other little leg, not my fingers. There we go. So that part is done. Just waiting for our cute little tag. Get that up there. There. Cute little box, isn't it? Okay. So for the tag, we're using our double oval punch. And I'm going to punch a gorgeous grape scalloped oval. And then we're going to stamp our sweet friend in gorgeous grape ink. And I didn't have any of the in color rhinestones, so we're going to make our own. And we're going to sponge that cute little flower. Okay, so here's our sweet little friend. Let's put that on straight. It is a very easy treat box to share, Beth. And like I said, with four of them out of sheet out of, out of a sheet of cardstock, you're going to get plenty. So we'll stamp our sweet little friend there. Now we're going to come in with our fresh freesia ink and add these little flowers. And we're just going to center that underneath there. There. Great little treat holder in purple for all our purple lovers. Get that center there. Punch that. And um, just a tip, if you use just a small strip of paper, you won't have this waste. But of course, I didn't think of that until later. So, small enough. All right, so let's close this guy up so we don't put our fingers in it. We're going to glue these two together. Just a quick little piece of adhesive. And I guess there's no right or wrong way for that little oval. There. Okay, we're going to add him with dimensionals. And I'm going to use some mini dimensionals so that it straddles that ribbon. We don't use minis very often, but they sure come in handy when you need them. Although, if you're like me, you'll cut down what's left of your dimensional pack to use every little bit. Alright, there's that. I'll just add him right here. Now, for the little flower, I am using our Strawberry Builder Punch. I guess I should get that white out. And we're going to punch the little flower out of this, just like so. Get our pieces out of here. And I'm going to sponge on some Gorgeous Grape ink. Let's put these guys away. We're done. To give it some depth and color. And I'm just going to pick it up if I can get it. Here we go. Just put lotion on my hands. Everything's slick. I'm just going to come through just a little bit. Or a lot of it. Kind of reminds me of the pansies. And that's all we needed that for. Now, I'm also going to use the tip of my um, take your pick tool and I'm going to press it right in the middle so that it kind of makes those petals fold up and we're going to add a mini glue dot to attach it to our label just like so put him up here in the corner and I want to add a rhinestone and since we're color coordinating everything come in and we're just going to color him. This is the dark Fresh Freesia Stampin' Blends marker. And it's not going to be real, real dark. It's going to be enough to give it that hue of color. I think the gems that are in the catalog are probably a lot darker. 
but I don't have any yet. They were on back order for a long time. Okay, so we'll pick this guy up, add him to the center, and see, even though it wasn't a dark color, it still gives you that hint of color. And there you go, we're done. Isn't that quick and easy? Clean up my mess here so you can see what we're doing. Let's tie this guy back up. And you'll have both of them here. But these would be great for a bridal shower, a baby shower, anything like that. Birthday party. And I have to say, once you taste those cookies, you're going to want to keep them on hand because they are delicious. <laughs> the first time I had them was in the airplane on the way to Orlando for on stage. So there you go. What do you think? Aren't they cute? I hope you enjoyed our project today. I will not be here next Thursday because it, it will be the third Thursday of the month and I will be prepping for Stamp Club, but I'll see you the week after that. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me. I will have all of this linked back to my online store, the blog post, I'm sorry, to my blog post. And my blog post will list the host code, which I just realized I didn't have that out for you in case you want to do some shopping. Thanks again, and I hope you have a great afternoon. Hi, Sherry. I see you join me too. Aren't they cute? All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.